Today, we are going to discuss about distance retrorouting. Routing is an important concept in networks and routing involves the routing table. And this routing can be of two types. One is your static routing, another one is your dynamic routing. Static routing is a routing which is being performed by giving your IP addresses manually. Whereas your dynamic routing is a routing which is being performed by the protocols. So for any autonomous system, this routing is of different categories. One is your intra-domain routing, other one is your inter-domain routing. And when I talked about the static routing, you the programmer is setting the routes. That means you use a, you use a programmed route that a network administrator enters into the router. That means in the router, the network administrator is entering the route using a command called IP root. So IP root is a command which is being used for static routing. And for dynamic routing, it is using a protocol. This protocol automatically adjusts based on the topology or the traffic changes. So two types of routing are there, static routing and dynamic routing. Where static routing, you give your IP address and you set the route. And for dynamic routing, you automatically, that uh, routing table automatically adjusts based on your protocol which you are using. So as we discussed about the routings, it is of two categories. One is your intra-domain routing, other one is your inter-domain routing. The intra-domain routing is further divided into a distance vector routing and link state routing. The example of your distance vector routing is your RIP, that is your routing information protocol. And link state routing is your OSPF, shortest path first protocol, open shortest path first protocol. Then you have your path vector protocol, path vector routing that is your BGP, that is your border gateway protocol. When we talk about the distance vector routing, the it is a routing technology where it talks about the least cost between any two nodes with a minimum distance. And it involves three phases, initialization, sharing and updating. So first when we talk about the distance vector routing tables, let us see this figure. You have five nodes A, B, C, D and E. And A to B the cost is 5 and from A to C the cost is 2 and from A to D the cost is 3. And there is no direct route to E or there is no direct. It is reaching E only through C. So A to A we are giving the cost to be 0, A to B the cost is 5, A to C the cost is 2. Then A to D, the cost is 3, but it cannot reach E directly. It has to go through the next hop C. So the next hop is given as C. So 2 plus 4, because A to C it is 2, and C to E it is 4. So 2 plus 4, so the A's table is 6. This is the first, this table is representation of the A's routing table. When we talk about the B's routing table, we can see here A to reach that is from B to reach A the cost is 5 and B to reach C the cost is 4 and B within itself the cost is 0 so B to E you have 3 but you cannot reach B to D directly so how you can reach B can go through A then to D so 5 plus 3 the table is 8 so this is the routing table of B and when you talk about C, you can see that from the node C, if you go to A, the cost is 2. From C, if you go to B, the cost is 4. And from C, if you go to node E, the cost is 4. And to reach D, it doesn't have any direct routes. So how, we had, how it has to reach from C to reach D, it has from C. You can see from C to reach D, there is no other go. You have to go through the next hop A and from then A to D. So C to A, the cost is 2 and from A to D, the cost is 3. So 2 plus 3 
it is given as 5 and the next hop is A. This is the routing table of C. Now let us see the routing table of D. From D to reach A it is 3 and there is no option to reach D directly and there is no option to reach C directly and D automatically is going to be 0. To reach E also you don't have any direct routes. So what the routing table has to reach B the path is from D to A and then A to B. So 3 plus 5 it is updated with 8 and to reach from D to C you can reach via A to C. So through A itself it can reach C. So the next hop is A and it is D to A it takes the value 3 and from A to C it takes the value 2. So 3 plus 2 it's 5. So C 5A. Then to reach E consider the route to reach E. So the next hop it is taking around A because D to A you can go then to C then to E but you have to give your next stop alone. So A is the next hop for reaching E. So how does this 9 come? You are adding 3 plus 2 plus 4. So you are getting E 9A. Next the E's table let us see. E note can reach directly C can reach directly B. So C if you are directly reaching it's 4 and B if you are directly reaching the cost is 3. But E cannot reach A directly. It can go through the next hop C. That is E can reach C and then to A. So A 6C. Then when we talk about D reaching D. It cannot reach directly uh, D. So again the next hop is C. Then it reaches A and then it reaches D. So the value is 4 plus 2 plus 3. It is 6 plus 3. So the value is 9. So this is figure represents the routing table of every node. Here in this diagram we have five nodes and every node's routing table is given with a root node then your uh, cost of that node how it reaches and then the next hop value. This is the first step in distance vector routing protocol. And then how to initialize the tables. To initialize the tables as we saw we have to initialize the tables with the so already we you, you know that you a cannot reach e directly so which table which you cannot reach directly it is given by the infinity so you can see in the from the previous thing a 6 it reaches through next stop c so you can give infinity value to the a stable of e for the e node you can give infinity and when you consider B stable, you know B cannot reach directly D. So B, D has been given with the infinity. And we talk about C stable. C cannot reach D directly. So that is given by the infinity field. Next C D stable. D cannot reach B directly. It cannot reach C directly. It cannot reach E directly. So all those three fields are given with the infinity value. And consider the E stable here. E cannot reach this D directly and E cannot reach A directly. So what is being given for A it is replaced by infinity and for D also it is replaced by infinity. So in initialization phase which cannot be reached directly is given by the infinity term. Next, after initialization, what we are going to do? We are going to share the information. In distance vector routing, each node is sharing its routing table with its immediate neighbors periodically when there is a change. That means if there is any change in the network, automatically the router exchanges its routing table with the neighboring nodes. So that is being done in the sharing. And updating what is happening the receiving node needs to check the add the cost between the sending node to each value in the second column. And the receiving node has to add the name of the sending to each row of the third column. So the receiving node needs to compare each row of its old table with the corresponding row of the modified version of the received table. So updating phase is where 
after exchanging their routing table they will find the least cost now we can see what happens in the updation we in it, we are taking a node with respect to the ace table so we'll first look at the table here what is the ace table now oh, old table 0 5 2 3 and infinity okay 0 5 2 3 infinity this is the ace old table we have taken the old table now what is received from c the to the uh, what has been received to the c c a to c the value is 2 right a to c the value is 2 so 0 plus 2 it a to 2 see here a to 2 it is see, see that c is table 2 4 0 infinity and 4 2, 4, 0, infinity and 4, that is the C stable. But when you go to the A, it is because it is exchanging its information with A, right? So, the routing table has been given to A. A, you can see it is 0. So, 0, then here it is 5, 2, 3 and infinity. C is stable, it is 2, 4 and 0, infinity. So, when A to C, now what is the cost between A to C? It is 2. So, you have to add 2 plus 2, so it, it is becoming 4. The A is new table becoming 4. Next, you can see your B. That is B means it is already 4. Now, you have to update it with 2 because A to C is 2. So, 4 plus 2, it is becoming 6. And already 0, so 0 plus 2, we are adding the cost is between A to C is 2. So, 0 plus 2, it becomes 2. And infinity, there is no change. You have to give infinity. And 4, you are adding 4 plus 2, it's going to be 6. So, this is the ACE modified table. Now, what you have to do is, you have to compare your modified table with the old table. Now, you see the cost of A with the next of C is 4, but here the cost is 0. And when you compare this, B has 6 as cost here. The old table has 5 as cost and C has 2 here, same it is here. So, there is no problem and D has infinity but here the cost is 3 in the old table. So, in the modified table you have cost as 6 but here it is infinity. Now, what we have to do? We have to compare both these tables and you have to take the least one. So, out of these two tables you can see that 4 is higher than 0. So, 0 is taken as it is the least cost and 0 and 6, this B to C, this node if you see, 5 is lesser so we are giving it as 5 and 2, both are same so you can give the same value and when we compare infinity and 3, 3 is least when compared to infinity. Similarly, here 6 and infinity, 6 is considered to be least so this is the A's new table. So, in the distance vector routing. First they initialize the nodes, then they share their information between their neighbors and in the third phase they are updating this information. So this diagram represents your updating process in the distance vector routing. This RIP is an example of distance vector routing and this RIP protocol is a protocol which is used in the intra-domain routing and it is inside an autonomous system. For any autonomous system, we are using this RIP protocol. It is a very simple protocol which is using its hop count as a routing metric. The hop count, how many hops it is going, that as a routing metric. And it prevents loops because the number of hops allowed here is only 15. This number of hops allowed for this routing information protocol is 15. And which limits the size of the network. So, if you are taking RIP, you have to limit the size of the network because the hop count which you are taking is just 15. Hop count of 16 is considered as an infinite distance. So, if you are taking a network with more than 16 hop count, it is not reachable. So, that is said to be unreachable. This RIP protocol is an example of distance vector pro routing and this RIP is of two things RIP version 1 and RIP version 2. RIP version 1 uses the classful routing 
already you would have studied about classful routing and classless routing so rip v1 has the classful routing and this periodic updates do not carry any subnet information so you don't have the classless feature in rip version 1 so you have the limitations with different size you cannot work on different size subnets so all uh, subnets in this network should have been the same size in rip version 1 and similarly there is no support for router authentication in rip version 1 as there is no authentication feature it is also vulnerable to various attacks so when you are sending a request message you will be getting a response message so in rip router what happens is that it will send a broadcast request message to all the devices and your neighboring routers will get the request and it, it will immediately res respond you by a message and that message will contain will be in the routing table and the response message is necessarily uh, unnecessarily sent and the update timer also expires so to avoid this rip version 2 came and rip version 2 had the features of classless interdomain routing and they instead of using a broadcast message they were using the multicast approach so in multicast approach what is happening then the entire routing table is being shared to all adjacent routers so to all the routers the information were shared and in rip v1 only it was using broadcast and here RIP V2 uses multicast. It has the features of authentication which was not present in RIP V1. And this even the unicast address is also being used in several applications. That's all about the distance vector routing.